In today's video, we're going to look at the two straw plait. It's another favourite of mine, but it's also a plait that I'm asked to demonstrate quite regularly. I've gone ahead and I've soaked my straws as usual. Um, we need two straws for the plait, but as I always say, soak a little bit more so that you can practice two or three times. So let's have a look at the little plait now. So as usual, I've tied my straws together tightly just below the heads. It's really important with the two straw plait that your straws are matching. So pay particular attention to the straws and make sure that they are both the same thickness. Feel them between your finger and thumb and you should feel that they're of equal thicknesses. If you're unsure, another way um, of telling is if both heads are the same length, then there's a good chance that the straws will be the same thickness. And it's really important when you're doing the two straw plait to have straws that are exactly the same. If you have a finer straw and a thicker straw, the thicker straw will push the finer straw out of place and you'll end up getting twists in your plait. So just be careful that you choose two straws equal thickness to begin with. So as I say, I've gone ahead and I've tied them together. Now there's two different ways to form a two straw plait. The first one is where the straws sit at 90 degrees to each other. So if I have one straw at six and one at three, and then I push this straw towards 12, you can see I've got a 90 degree angle in here. And then what I would do is just bring the work round so that I'm back to the start again. I've got a six o'clock straw and a three o'clock straw and I would push the six straight forward to 12 so that again you've got this 90 degree angle. But when you're doing a two straw plait like this, you will always get a twist in your plait. And I think one of the things that people often talk about with this plait is how to get a nice straight plait. So to get the nice straight two straw plait, we actually work instead of the angle at 90 degrees, we work with the angle in here at 120. So let me just take out these two moves just to sort the straws out for you. So in this case, I work with a straw at six o'clock and I've moved the other straw up to two o'clock so that the angle in here is 120. And I'm going to take the six o'clock straw and I'm going to move it to 10 o'clock. So I just pop it over there and there you've got another angle of 120. Turn your work round so we're back to six and two and then fold over to 10 and round. So basically, if you think of a clock face and divide it in three, so you've got two, six and 10, and that's the, the positions that you're working towards. And I like to start with a six o'clock straw and push it away from me. I feel I've got far more control doing it that way than bringing it towards me. But there's just as many people work in that method. So it's up to you to find the, the way of holding the straw that's comfortable for you. So if we come round, I go six to ten and then round. Six to ten and then round. And it's really repeating the same movement, six to ten, and each time making sure that my straw is folding directly over the top of the previous straw. So not slipping out to the side or anything. It's almost like building bricks, one on top of the other. So each time I fold, it's got to be on top of the, the previous straw. I think hand position is quite important when you're doing this um, plait. So at the moment, I've got my finger and thumb here just very lightly on the plait. And you'll notice that I've left the heads on. I always leave the heads on, even if the project doesn't call for it. 
because the, the heads act as a little bit of a weight, so they're hanging down towards the table. And if at the end I need the, the heads removed, I can just trim them off then. So always plait with a little bit of weight under you. So as I say, thumb and first finger, they're controlling the plait, just holding lightly, not tight at all. But you'll see here that when I've folded the straw over, it ends up between my middle finger and my ring finger. If I tip it this way, you'll see. And that controls this loose straw. So it's folding over my first finger and there's a little bit of tension on there. And then it's in between these two. And then I can turn it round. Before I let go with these two here, I then pick up the loose straw so that never does a loose straw come undone. And then I push away from me again and round. My right thumb is doing the work to push the straw over. And remember, you're opening that angle up much bigger than 90 degrees. You must have the 120. So you're pushing your straw away towards the back. Push it, um, push it over. And we just keep going round in this fashion. So I catch it in between my fingers and then I pass it into my next hand. So there's actually quite a small movement. So I'm catching it with my fingers and then I'm passing it on to my right hand. And you'll notice how my right hand is actually going underneath the straw so that it allows the straws to come round back into position again. So if I'm here, my hand's going underneath so that the two o'clock can quite easily come round to the six o'clock again. Push away and round. And with this plait, it's really important to try and get into a rhythm. If you can be quite rhythmical with your plaiting, you will find that you get a much nicer plait. So a constant 120 degree angle. The folds are folding one on top of the other. So you'll see that there. You can quite clearly see how each fold is on top of the, the previous one. And we'll keep on going round. And I'll slow down one more time just to let you see how I'm working. So we go from six to ten. Catch it in my fingers. A little bit of tension here. I turn round. I pick up with my other hand. I let go with my left hand and then reposition it. So in there, let go. So again, small movement. So I am letting go here but it's a small movement, just enough to let the plait straighten. When pupils often start this plait, they find that one straw just circles around the second straw and they never get a plait. But what I say to them is just to keep going. Don't give up at that point. Just keep thinking what you're doing. You're folding over the top. So the, the straws are actually quite flat. If I tilt them this way, can you see there's a flat plane here and over. And you really, you just keep on going now until your plait is long enough for the project that you want to, to use. Once it is long enough, just bring the two straws back together again and you'll tie right at the end of the plait. And if I take in a finished plait, just to let you see, and you can just see how lovely it is. So I hope you've enjoyed that and look forward to seeing you next time.